So hopefully by now you've had a chance to work your version of the practice exercise. In this lecture we are going to go through the solution and walk through each piece of it. So with this particular exercise we are taking a look at the accounting equation and how various transactions impact all the various components of the accounting equation. So let's take a look at transaction A. Scott Smith invested $50,000 of cash in Snacks McQueen Incorporated to start the company. So with this we would take $50,000 and we would increase cash by that amount. We would take a look at the common stock because this investor, this owner is investing money into the company and this would be $50,000 increase there as well. Now as you can look down at the very bottom you'll see we have the assets, liabilities and equity these two totals must always remain in balance. So B, Snacks uses $5,000 cash to buy office furniture. So they're spending cash, so that's a negative $5,000 amount for the cash. And then office furniture is an asset that is increasing at the same time. So we have an increase to office furniture for $5,000. So one of the assets decreased, one of the assets increased by the same amount, we're still in balance. Next one, C, we purchased $3,500 of office supplies on account. So with the account we're talking about in this case, we're purchasing something, so we owe money. Our liability is increasing by $3,500, and our office supplies are increasing as well. So in this case, one of the assets increased, one of the ass or one of the liabilities increased on opposite sides of the accounting equation. So we are still good to go here. We're still in balance, as you can see down here, fifty-three thousand five hundred on both sides. We're good to go. D, we provided services in the amount of one thousand dollars to a customer on account. With this account, we're talking about the accounts receivable. So this is increasing by a thousand because we've provided services. We are eventually going to receive this money and the revenue under the equity section, this would be increasing here by that same 1000. We can record it as revenue, even though we haven't collected it yet. E, we provide services to another customer in the amount of $1,500 and we immediately collect cash. So in this case, the cash asset is increasing by 1500 and it's still a service, so it's still a revenue. We are increasing revenues by 1500 as well. Now we're going to go to F. Here, Snacks pays $400 for the first week of salaries for its two employees. So we are paying the money. So it's going to be a $400 decrease to cash. Now the expense side, we have to take a look at this for a bit. The expense itself is increasing. So we're increasing the expense, which decreases equity. So if we take a look at that, it's a $400 increase to expense. And actually, uh, my apologies. So it is an increase to expense. But the, the little minus sign up here tells us that we have to use a negative when we're recording this expense. And that's actually what is up in the instruction. Use a negative sign for expenses and dividends as an increase to one of those accounts decreases overall equity. So yes, it's increasing expense, but it's decreasing overall equity. If we take a look at G, Snacks collects $500 as partial payment from the customer in D. So we're collecting $500, which is an increase to cash. If you go up to D, this is where we set up a customer on account. We set it up with a positive 1,000. Now we're going to have to reduce it by 500. We're not collecting the whole thing, just part of it. H, Snacks pays off the debt of $3,500 from transaction C. So if you remember may recall this is where we purchased office supplies on account we have the thirty five hundred dollar liability we're now paying it off with H 
So we have a negative $3,500 cash and a negative $3,500 liability to reduce it to zero. Now I, Snacks, collects the remaining $500 from the customer in D. It's another collection of cash for $500. And remember, that was where we decreased accounts receivable to reduce it now to zero. And finally, we get to J. Scott Smith withdrew $3,000 as a dividend to himself. It is cash from the company. It's reducing the cash balance. So it's a negative $3,000 there. The dividends, however, just like the expense, it's going to be a negative $3,000 to reflect the fact that it's reducing overall equity. After all is said and done, we could take a look at each of these accounts and their final balance. And you'll notice the total assets when you add them up are 49,100. The total liabilities and equity are 49,100. So we are in balance and that was the goal of this entire assignment. So hopefully this walkthrough has helped to clarify any issues you may have had when you went through the problem yourself.